Our dear brothers and sisters, we greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. As we continue this wonderful journey in the book of Romans, invite somebody to join you. Ask somebody to log in. And make sure to like what you see. As we get into the word, before we get into the word, I'd ask us to humble ourselves before the presence of God and dedicate this session to God in prayer. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for your word. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Breathe upon your word. Yes, Lord. Let it come alive in us. Yes, Lord. For it is spirit mm. and it is life eternal. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today's reading we will take from the book of Romans. Chapter 2. We pick it from verse 5. For us to get context, but the real message will come from verse 6 to verse 11. So let's read from verse 5. The Bible says, But in accordance with your hardness and your impertinent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Who will render to each one according to his deeds? Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality. And to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. In the text that we just read, what do we see? One, we see a principle that God establishes. And that is what we see in verse 6. Then from verse 7 to verse 10, we see the application of that principle. Having seen the application of that principle, then in verse 11, we see the explanation why this principle works that way. Now for you, so you have... First of all, the principle. So it explains what God has set in place. And having understood the principle, we then go to who does it apply to. And then we ask why that principle applies. So today we will look at the three. As we pick them from this 
text that okay. we just read. But for you to understand it totally, I will just take a step back so that you see the holistic picture. And we will draw it from the lesson that we learned last week. There we learned several applications. Several key statements that God presents in this text. He begins in verse 1 of chapter 2 by pointing out to the people who thought they were out of the bracket who will face the wrath of God or who will face God's judgment because for them they knew God but God comes in this text and says, therefore, you are inexcusable, O man. Whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Why? Because you who judge practice the same things. What he tries to say here is that you are practicing the very same things, which things, those that we see at the close of chapter 1. He says there may be different manifestations of the same things. There may be a different extent. You may not go to the extreme of where these people have gone. But when on the scales of heaven, he says these are one and the same. And he says because of that, you will suffer the same judgment. And that is the thought he brings forward in verse 2 and verse 3. And why is, why is that so? Because he says you now store up that's the concept he brings in verse 4 by despising the riches of his goodness and the forbearance and long suffering what is happening is that you are piling up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. What is the he's trying to say? He's trying to say you are in the same boat. Why are you in the same boat? Because you are practicing the same things you are judging the other of practice. So your judgment is based on the principle. You will be judged by the same principle. And then you may ask me, what is the principle? The principle is what informs our subject today. The, the principle is that God rewards all people. God rewards all of all walks of life. There will be a reward from them. And having understood that, let's go into the text. From verse 6, he says, who will render to each according to his deeds? So, the question is, who will render? Now, for you to understand that, you need to go back to verse 5. And then you will see that the person they are talking about, who will render is God. And this text, who will render to each according to his deeds, is 
Here, Paul is actually quoting Old Testament scripture. Paulo, because we meet this same text in two different places in the Old Testament. We meet the text in Psalm 62, verse 12. Look at what the text says. The Bible says, Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For you render to everyone according to his word. We find the same text in Proverbs 24 and verse 12. This is what the text says. It says, if you say, Surely we did not know this. Does not he who weighs the hearts consider it? For who keeps your soul? Does he not know it? And will he not render to each man according to his deeds? So why is Paul quoting Old Testament scripture in the New Testament? He wants to bring to our attention the principle that God has not changed. God is the God of principle. He does not change. This is the way he has always operated. And whether it is New Testament or Old Testament, the same principle states stands and it will not change. He says in Malachi, I am the Lord and I change not. So don't think that the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. No, he is God. He does not change. So what principle he has stated? Here he states that he is the executor of his judgment. He is the one who renders to everyone. Now, the word render is the Greek word apodidomi. Apodidomi is an interesting word. It is the word to deliver again. To give back. To repay. To recompense. To reward. Now, that means there has been something done and there is a re recompense, reward. Payback. It means to give back for what has been done. For example, if somebody came to work for you, after they have worked, then they deserve to be paid. So what you are giving them is not a gift. What you're giving them is what they have earned. So you are giving them what is due to them. And he says he will render to every man, to every person. That is interesting because it brings two perspectives. It brings the individual aspect. And it brings the universal aspect. So it brings the individual aspect that no one will miss. But then also it brings the universal aspect saying it will apply to everyone. Uh, to bring it for your understanding, it's like saying, 
I will give if there are ten people and you say I will give to every five. Now that is not universal. That is specific. You may say now to the ten, I'm going to give the ten. And of the ten you bring four and say I've given the ten four. Now that is not individual. Now, when you say into every person, if there are one billion people, he's saying to every one of the one billion. If there are six billion or ten billion, and he says to every person, I will render. His, his meaning, I'm going to give each and every one of the 10 billion. So the universality then means everyone will receive. But then he says something. He qualifies it by saying, according. Nagamba. He will render each one according. Now, the word according means in direct proportion. So, your deeds will bring you to accountability. The word according is the Greek word egon. And it brings the sense that he will reward you according to your work. Or according to your labor. Or according to your actions. Or according to what you have done. Or according to how you have transacted business on this side of time. Basically, what is implied here is that God is keeping an impeccable record of every person's life. How they conduct themselves on this side of time. Now, for you to understand this, I will relate it to Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11. John the Revelator is now taken back to heaven. And what he sees, he writes. Verse 11, he says, And then I saw a great white throne. For those of you who missed our series on Revelation, please look them up. This, then I saw a great white throne. We see him describe the throne. One as great. Great speaks of power. Then he mentions the color white, which speaks of purity. Throne speaks of rulership or judgment. So, which speaks to its purpose. And then he says, and him who sat on it. And he's talking about the Lord Jesus. And he says, from who? Whose presence the earth and the heaven fled away. And no place was found in them. For them. And then he goes on to expound on this. He says, Then I saw. What did he see? The dead. Great and small. Standing before God. Let's first break down the great and small. Who are the great? The great are those that are known. 
There are people that are known by you and I. People who when they die, the whole world, the whole country, the whole region comes to a standstill. It may be that even public holidays are announced for their death to honor their burial. I'm not saying we should not honor the people who die and have been useful. But I'm, I'm describing the events. The people who are great. They are known by everyone. And then he says, and the small. What is the who are the small? These are those that are insignificant. Nobody knows that they have lived. In the eyes of people, these are nobodies. But what is the commonality here? John says, I saw the dead. The great and the small all die. And John is saying, I saw them great and small. They are all dead. And then the second commonality. John sees them all now standing before God. And he says, then the books were open. Not one book. The books were open. And he says, and another book was open. First the books, then the book was open. And then he describes this book as the book of life. And he says, and the dead were judged. The great and small were not only dead, but they are now standing all before God. So even those that deny that God exists, we stand before him. And the Bible says, and he judged them according to their work. So if he's judging them according to their works and by the things which were written in the books so God has a record and now that record which cannot be erased is brought the four and they will be judged according to their works. According to what is written. Now what does that mean? That means every thought, every action, every motive. And Jesus brings it to the nth degree in Matthew chapter 12. Verse 36. Where he says, but I say to you, that for every idle word, men speak. They will give account of it in the day of judgment. So thoughts, deeds, motives, and words, all these come into the picture here. And they will be judged. And what happens? John continues to give us the revelation of a very terrifying experience that happened. He says the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 
kunokwe kufo kwa kubiri and anyone buli muntu not found written in the book of life atasa angibwanti yawandi kwa mu kitabo cyo abalamu was cast into the lake of fire yasuli wa munyange yo muliro revelation 2013 to 15 kubikuri we sura yabyo nyiri wa 13 paka 15 that is the picture he paints for us kino cha tusigira tumanye and then that says if it is according to our words kati bwachibanga chisinzira nge bikorwa byafe webiri then that means the degrees of punishment vary kidaga kati no busungu bwe misango bujja kuba wanja uru because it is proportionate to the work that you did kubanga bakusalira omusango kusinzira kubikolwa byo so when i meet some people who say after all i'm going to hell let me do what i want bogambo ori anyway nayo ngenda mugeena kati kankole chenga bwenjagala you are missing the point of toyna chitegeda because your works will be judged bagenda kusalira emisango kusinzira kubikolwa byo says god will render to everyone according to their works bible yechinyweza katonda alisa sura buli muntu ngebi So understand this tegera from this perspective o ngabwo chida now you may say but for me i'm a believer bwezo gamaze kate omukiriza i i cannot i will not be judged awomba mpise otsidi yange bi even believers now bakiriza will be judged according to their works bali sasu bali sali wo musango nge bikolwa bya scriptures have very many examples ebyawo andikwa bitulaze ebyokwera birako nkumi look at romans chapter 14 verse 10 Barumi 10 na nyonyi lwa 10 Paul writes the church Paul yeah. awandikire kanisa and he says but why do you judge your brother na yegwe chiche chikusaliza omusango muganda wo or why do you show contempt for your brother chiche chikunyomesa muganda wo he says for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ kubanga fenna tuyimirira tuliyimirira mu maso gentebe ye misango ya Kristo who is Paul talking to here Paul ayogereria he is talking to believers ayogereri abakiriza your works will be examined ebikolwa bibajja kubikemera your acts are going to be scrutinized ebintu biwakola bagenda kubiyetegereza and like it is for the degrees of punishment for the unbeliever ngeri abatakiriza nabwe misango busungu bujja kuba bwao kana i believe there will be degrees of reward for those that have been faithful ngam no muwendo gwempera ya fejja kwa ukano kusinzira kubwesigwabo so we need to give attention kati wino kusayo moyo of how we utilize our time here on earth edi engeri jo koze so obulamu bwo kunsi kuno ah jonathan edwards said jonathan edwards yayogeda he said when we waste time bwetu maro bwetu ono no budde then we will have to spend more and the less time that we have left kati tugenda kola nyo okusinga nadala mutunus mubange tolo lietu sigaza why because we have to give an account tuli no tuli where embalidiza how we invested our time engeri je twakozesa ebisera bya fo how we invested our treasure engeri je twakozese bilabo bya fo bilabo bya fo of how we invested our talent ne engeri je twakozesa talent as it were i call these the three t's ebyombita ta s3 that we need to be cognizant of in this work of oh, life do we know ko bitegera nga tuchali balamu kunsi time ebiseda treasure ebyobugagga e, e, and talent ne talent as a fee. why because again it, this is not an isolated scripture kine chawa ndikuba chiri wonna second corinthians ba corinthians echo kubiri chapter 5 verse 10 Tano nyirirwa kumi right to the church again Paul eri kanisa This is what he says Abagamba He says therefore Rensonga we shall all appear Fenatuli bidida before the judgment seat of Christ Mumaso ganda mulonde yo musange ya Kristo that each buli sechinomu may receive aliokawebwe a recompense for the deeds done Empera nge bikolwa bwe bwe byali in the body ngachali munsi with a good oba birungi or worthless obanga tebigasa so even for the worthless nebyo byo ita tebigasa there is a reward bidike mpera so the principle here and no no one is what paul is stating paulo janyweza that god is going to reward katonda yagenda okusasula everyone according 
to their deeds. And in verse 7, she paints out the picture for us of the deeds of the believers. And the reward, it says, eternal life to those who by patient continuous in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality. And this is very explicit. So that means to us that we who are being rewarded those who by patient continuance those who cheerfully endure and what are they enduring? In this enduring, they are seeking glory. They are seeking honor. They are seeking immortality. Seeking glory and honor, not their glory. They are seeking God's glory. That whatever they are doing in the body and out of the body is for the glory of God. Their, their delight is to honor God. Their delight is to reveal the eternal life that they have received from Christ. Why? Because now, like Hebrews tells us, chapter 3 and verse 14, he says, now we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, he says, what is trying to say? Say, now that you have become partakers, now that you have become believers in Jesus Christ, you have received Christ. And now that you have received Christ, you are now partakers of Christ. Christo. And he puts a condition if we hold first the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. Let me put it this way. I have met a lot of people who say, no, for me, I, I, sometime, after some time, I, I gave up. And now the question is, what faith was that? That's, you see, the faith, and I quote this, it's not my quote, I got it from somewhere else. He says the faith that fizzles before the finish line had a flower in the first place. It was not genuine faith. The genuine faith in Christ Jesus runs the race until the very end. If it doesn't get to the finish line, it was a counterfeit faith, not a faith of a true believer. It was flawed from the start. The tests that come, come not to test you, they come to test your faith. They come to purify that faith. They come to fortify that faith. And that faith endures, perseveres in 
obedience to Christ. Throughout the entire life of a believer. That is why we are called the people of faith. That is why the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. And that's why the Bible also quotes and Peter Paul quotes the same. He says now abides the three. Faith. Hope. Esubi and love. No kuagala. Faith. Na yoko kukiriza. Genuine faith. O kukirizo kwa na madala gube kube That's the point I want to make. Chino chemba denja galo utegede. Before we leave the subject, can we just move to Colossians? Katugendo kumba Colossians. Chapter 1. Esule soka. Verse 22. Onyiruavili mubili. To 23. We pick it from 21. This is a favorite for me. Chino za nchagala nyo. Because this is the decoration. This puts the final touch on this subject of reward. Look at what he says here. He says, and you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind, by wicked works. Yet now, he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith. You see, the probably if you indeed continue in the faith. Grounded and steadfast. And are not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Which was preached to every creature under heaven. Of which I, Paul, became a minister. Listen to that. So, anyone who is a true believer begins this journey of faith. So, you persevere in this journey of faith. You continue in the journey of faith and end while pursuing this journey of faith. Paul winds his journey by saying, I have fought a good fight. I have run my course. I have kept the faith. You may lose some things along the way. But you need to keep faith. The faith. So true believers persevere by faith until the very end. Why? Because we need to understand this. Paul explains in chapter 5 of Romans. And he says the outward working of justification by faith. Is, the, is that we exalt in hope of the glory of God. So faith is followed by honor. Now, honor, this is honoring God. And God will honor us on that last day. As he recognizes our faithfulness. And it all comes back to this. That Paul paints in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. From verse 11 to verse 15. 
This is where he sums up the recompense issue. And he says, for no other foundation can anyone lay. Than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ. I touched that in depth when we dealt with the book of Revelation. And we were looking at the foundation of the city. But here he's saying there is no other foundation laid. He says the foundation has been laid and that is Jesus Christ. And then he says, Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, with silver, precious stones, gold, Hey, and straw. Each one's work will become clear for the day we declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test everyone's work of what sort it is. Let's pause there for a moment. He says, on the day of judgment, at the judgment seat of Christ, every man's work is going to be tested of what material he used. What is going to be tested here is not the quantity. What is going to be tested is the quality <laughs> of the materials that were used. And he goes on to say, if anyone's work which he has built on Christ, Christ endures, then he will receive the reward. So his reward is dependent on the endurance of the work. So imagine having a lorry of straw and somebody has a kilo of gold. And this is tested by fire. What will endure? So it's not the quantity. Yes, quantity is good, but we first look at the quality, quantity of what. So he goes on to say, and if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved. Yet as so through fire. And this is an interesting one. <laughs> so what is going to happen? <laughs> Some people on that day will come up with nothing. They left here with everything. But the material used was wood. It was hay. It was straw. And all that was lost. So we need to mind how we are building in the kingdom. The three Time. Talent. And treasures. That is the material we are using. That is what God has given us. And that is what turns into the gold. The precious stones that we used to be in. So everyone will receive according to what has been endured. So we will not get the same. Some will get greater crowns than others. Now, I, somebody asked, what will you use those crowns for? So, 
will I go in heaven with my eight crowns walking around? No. Tolerega mugaso chiti ngule hizo nja kutambula mugulunga ni ne ngule munana zonna. John gives us that revelation. Yokana ya kulago kutegezo ko. Since we are casting down the crowns at the foot of Jesus. Ah batukuvude bakwate ngule za bende baziteka wansi we bigere bya Yesu. Now imagine this they are casting down their crowns glorifying him and you have nothing to offer. Bata ekengule za bende bazija ku mitene bazisa wansi ku bigere bya Kristo na yegwe nga tuli nacha kuteka masoge. For all the time for all the years he has given you na. Kumya kaji onaja kuwa dengo chali mula mukunsi. Think about that. Lowoza. For all eternity you have nothing to offer. Nga emirembe je jidake jitakoma nga toli na cha kuwayo for the life that he gave you on this side of time kubula mugo nabwe yakuwa ngo chali ku nsikuno what a great loss that will be oku kufirwa kwa manyi nyo and paul goes on to explain paul ayongera you see if those that is what will happen icho kiye kiribawo to those that believe kubakiriza now can we look at the deeds of the unbeliever katugende mbikolo byaba takiriza now here he classifies those ones abo baba teka mubika because now he turns to verse 8 mulinyirye ro munana and we see him use the word but ajaye chigambo na ye and he says but to those who are selfishly ambitious or those who are self seeking ne kwabo abainonyeze byabo bechitibwa chabo now this is an interesting one who are those that are self seeking what does he mean by self seeking self ambitious ategeza chibwa gamba bana abainonyeze chitibwa chabo so these are the ones number one abo okusoka who just live for themselves uyunga buli chimako la kwegulumiza they have never denied themselves anything ngaye talina che yefiriza wadde they have never died to self tafanga kuruluko kwebyesa kwe komasanyuge they have never come to the end of self tamanyi che kitegeza okutuka woko so, so you still want to do what you want to do gochali mukankole byendo woza byenjagala when you want to do it njachikola bwenjagala how you want to do it zajjo kusala wengeri jenjo chikola to do it njakusosolani bwenkola nacho ngenda chikolera wa that attitude is of those who are self seekers and those that gaba benonyeze byabo you are not living for christ bwe toli mukugulumiza christ and what he wants to do with you nebya agenderero okola okuita mugwe you are living for self bwe byonna byokola byakwesa nyusa the bible says he continues to amplify this you do not obey the truth akugamba gwe to ulira mazima you are among those that suppress the truth the truth is evident but you say no i'm as for myself um ebitufu na mazima we bidi na ego gamba anti nedda njakola byenjagala says you don't obey the truth instead you are obeying unrighteousness to ulira mazima osaze wo kuulira obutali butukirivu and he says it when that happens what you will call about is in life we need to understand mubulamu no tegera that in life we are a slave to some someone or something mumubulamu no oli mukozi bwa muntu yen waliwo muntu oli muddu wa muntu obeli yechintu chonna i know this does not go down easily with many of us we not see into we because we live in an era that thrives or rejoices with independence omulembe guno gugumi guyimusa okwe okwe tongoza ngo omuntu but you are either a slave of god for righteousness oli muddu wa katonda mubutukirivu or you are a slave of sin for unrighteousness obo oli muddu wa kibyokole obutali butukirivu so in the sense jesus is either your master Chikulaga Yesu ayinzo okubangwa ye mukama wawo and you are following him and serving him omugoberero omulirize ero omugum omuweleza all sin is your master obechi bi ye mukama wawo and you are living for it era oliwo ochiweleza you are obeying it and not the truth ochiwuliriza amazima wagasuleri and believe me there is no middle ground here kiriza gana tewali ntinze sirina wengwa this is what paul tells us in romans chapter 6 mubalumye mukaga paul agamba he says do you not know agamba negwe tomanyi that to whom you present yourself slaves omungwe eliyo yo enagwe we wayo ngo muddu kumulira you are that one slaves katofu you obey 
ufuse mudu we muntu oyo gogondera whether of sin leading to death obogondera kibinge mpera kufa all of obedience leading to righteousness obo kugonda nge mpera bwe butukirivu but god be thanked na ye katonda ye bazibwe that though you were slaves of sin wadenga mwali badubachi bi you obeyed from the heart ne mwagonda ne mitima jamu that form of doctrine which you were delivered enjigirize yo jemwanu nulibwa and having been set free from sin bwe mwawe bedembo okuva mu kibi you became slaves of righteousness ne mufuka baduba utukirivu you see the picture otegedde slave of sin muddu wa kibi slave of Muddu wabutokirivu no middle ground here teri yonti sigwa yonna you are either obedient to one or ina gogondera kwa aba babiri or the other obodi and then he goes on to explain azimbulukusa the reward of unrighteousness empere eliya obutaba na butokirivu he uses two words ebigamba konsa bibiri one is wrath agamba busungu the second is indignation echo kubiri agamba bukambwe these are not very nice words to have nebigambo so the word ya gadde kubana byo but they paint the picture nebi kuyamba okutegera of what happens echivawo and then he says but then he goes back nadda yate to explain to us atunnyonyola the things that will be given as the reward for those who are believers in sasulwe nawe baba bakiriza in the next verse runyiri oluddako and is he mentions glory ayogera ayogera kuchitibwa mentions honor ayogera kutendo which he has mentioned before ayogedeke mabiga and then he mentions peace nazako ne mirembe which speaks of a well being kiraga kuba bulunji of awareness of the soul in Ge- this time ememe yo eri bulunji mu bisere ebyo and it also speaks of that tranquility of the soul on the other side of time ne mirembe je je meme yo ngomba zo kuva mu mubiri so now having explained that but mazo kunyonyola in verse 10 we come he goes to verse 11 ayingira 10 nemu and what he goes to verse 11 to explain to us chatu nyonyola mu 10 nemu is what why this must happen ya kuenso nga lwachi bino bitekeddo kubawo and he says this will happen bino bidi bawo the word for the unbelievers e okusasulo mu atakiriza and the word for the believers no kusasulo mu kiriza will happen bijja kubawo because god enso nga katonda is impartial tasosola he will write to everyone buli oma musasula both the greek eri omuyonani and the jew no mu judaya the jew first because they know him okusokera ku mu judaya kubanga bo be amu manya on the side they fall the reward comes to them kuruiru nabje bali nayo bajja kusasulwa and then to the greek nazako mu yonana those that had not believed beba abatanna abatakiriza and that's why the bible says bible yega and i would call james chapter 3 verse 1 yakobe sura yo kusatu olunyirira olusoka Let not many of you become teachers. Banji mugumwe temufuka basomesa. My brother, baganda bange. Knowing this, kubanga mumanyi as such shall incur a stricter. Banato omusango gwa gujja kusinga ko because the words that we speak when we are teaching ebigambo byetuogera nga tusomesa will be weighed on God's scale of judgment katonda e, bijja kusalirwa ku mutindo katonda gwako zeso kusale misango and we need to understand that you as a believer in Jesus Christ so ko tegere gwo mukiriza mu Kristo Yesu having received this truth bwa mala okufutegera amazima gano having received the impartation of the holy spirit bwa wateke bwa mu moyo mutukuvu munda cannot then us sit back tosobola kutula no kutula there is a call on your life oliko kuyitibwa it is a call to obedience okuyitibwa kuno kugonda to the conduct of your life eri empisa zo I, i know this is not a sermon that you will get in your day to day service service ene njiri yo to judge ulira nyo mu service yo but na ye the fact is that god amazima katondo often we say no but you know 
you're talking about works yes i'm talking about works kitufu ngamba bikolwa because our works will be judged e milimu je tukola ba judge salile bisa what why why will they be judged lwachi because god katonda Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 tells us abe efeso 2:10 egamba he has prepared good works atese tese milimu emirungi that we may walk in tutambulire mwejo so our lives obulamu bwafe should reflect good works because god has already ordained that bulage ebikolwa ebirungi kuba katonda yabiteka teka da so when our lives do not reflect the good works obulamu bwafe bubule mu okulaga ebirimu emirungi two things are happening bibili bye biliwo ekisoka we are not walking according to the will of god tetuli mu kutambula ngo kutesa kwa katonda kwe kuli number 2 we are not heeding to the bidding of the spirit of god according because he is at work in our lives that's why he says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundant asobola okola okusukuluma nokweyogerayo think or ask according to the power that is at work okusinga waguru byetulowoza kusaba kusinzira ko ya kola mufe and on the final day kulunako olusemba Jesus tells us in Revelation chapter 22 Yes mukubikuli wesula ya bili mu verse 12 kumi na bigi says behold agamba lava i am coming quickly nzija mangu and my reward is with nempera yange nzijja nayo to give everyone okusasula buli muntu according to his word ngebikolwa byewe byali jesus is coming yesu akomba wo he says i am coming nagamba akomba wo to reward okusasula every one buli omu according to his work okusinzira ngebikolwa byewe byali so that's why he comes back to philippians jeva wandi kabo ba filipo 2 sura ya 12 and says work out your salvation kola mu obloko zibwo kutambuze bulunzi and trembling mukutia ne mukutne bukankana why because it is god who is at work in you kubanga katonda yakola okuyita mugwe both to will okusala wo and to do his pleasure no kola eti musanyosa so when you have that understanding botegera botyo then you cannot live for self katosobola kutambuza bulambu nunga wesa nyusa wika why because second corinthians 5:15 ba corinthians joko bitano 15 look at what he says he says and he died agamba ye yafa for all yafidirira bonna why so that oruweso orwecho those who live katibona balamu may live no longer for themselves bale mu kubera balamu mu kwesa nyusa but for him who died na ye kokuruoyi yafa and rose again na zuki deira on their behalf kurwa we bona this brings to people to perspective wano tula ba bantu babidi he died for all yafidirira bona but Are you one of them? Obali bo mukwabo? Do you count yourself as one of them? We balo mukwabo. If the answer is I'm not sure. Wobanga toka kasa. Now is the moment. Yeno sawo kakase. To surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Obulambo bwe eri Kristo Yesu. He died. Ye ya so that you no longer live for yourself. Ole mo kuba mulamu kuluwo but live for him who died. Na ye kuluwo ye yafa and rose again. Nazukirira kululuo surrender your life to him. Mukwaso bulamu. You may say I'm a good person. Yes. Okay. Ndiwa mpisa nunji kale. But the fact is, na yama zima. There is the book of life. Oh kitabo cha balamu je chidi. Is not in that book. E dinyele we chibate dia satadi mwecho. Of what you have done. Sinso nga mpisa chi you will be found in the lake of fire. Oge omaliriza munyanja ya buliro. Because what's rather than indignation. Obusungu no bukambwe bwa katonda. All all and righteous. Bili kubona abatali butu atukirivu Surrender your life to Jesus. Obulambo bukwase Yesu. Make him today. Olwa lero. The savior and the lord of your life. Mufule mulokozi wera mukamba. Why don't you say this prayer? Damwe sale lero. Say dear lord of glory. Ai mukamo wechitibwa. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mulinyeria ese dia mai. I am a sinner. Ndi muono. I need a savior. Neta gomulokozi. Jesus you are the savior of the world. Yesu gwe mulokozi wensi. And you die. 
and rose again for my justification. Today I receive you in my life as the Savior and my Lord. Change me, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. And help me to live not for myself, but to live for your glory, to live for your honor, and to live for your Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. If you say that prayer, the Lord has heard you. He has graciously saved you. And he has sent his spirit to begin to do a new work in you. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All, all things are passed away. All things have become new. There is the new you. Please call that number on the screen. Somebody will pick it up. And give you the first instruction to do this walk of faith. For you, the believer in Christ, don't forget what he says. In Revelation 22, he says, Behold, I am coming and my reward is with you. Render to everyone according to his word. God rewards everyone. Jesus is coming. He will reward you for your work. So make good use of your time. Make good use of your treasures. Make good use of your talent. For the benefit of the kingdom. For the glory and the honor of God. And our Lord Jesus Christ. God Christ. Let it bless you. From Dominion Church. It has been a pleasure having you. So, so till we meet again. Say shalom. Mirembe.